Hi you love, how are you doing? Welcome to Theatre Review number 7! So, today I'm going to be discussing the wonderful musical that is The Grinning Man. It is available to watch online until Friday midnight. If you don't watch it, you're a fool. It is one of the best musicals I've ever watched. Genuinely. Incredible. The Bristol Old Vic at home have streamed it for a week. It did get extended by six hours, I think, which is amazing. I hope they do it again because I really want to watch it again. Um, I urge you to watch it. It is, in my opinion, everything that musical theatre good musical theatre, brilliant musical theatre should be, and more. The music is hauntingly beautiful. You've got this very sort of ethereal tone to the show as soon as it begins. I really enjoy that. It's very different. It's not like mainstream musical theatre. The puppetry is beautiful. The use of puppetry throughout the show is something that I think isn't is an incredible achievement in musical theatre. I don't think, you know, aside from shows like Avenue Q, for example, I don't think we see puppets used throughout a whole musical theatre show that often and of course, it's it's a very complex thing to include in a show, but I think this show works incredibly well with puppets and they do it so, so well that it's so gripping, it's so enticing watching these puppets. Instantly, you forget that you're watching people handling puppets and obviously that's the point, so excellent. So, what's it about? A strange new act has arrived at the fairground. Who is Grim Payne and why does he have this huge hideous smile on his face? He is helped by an old man, a blind girl and a wolf to essentially find out who he is. Before I go any further, Louis Maskell, who played the Grinning Man, Grim Payne, is one of the best performers I have ever seen in a musical, let alone a show. He completely embodied this character to the point where every movement, every vocal phrase was articulated with such precision and care that you could not take your eyes off him. Beautiful. His voice was remarkable i've never heard uh, singing quite like it i think it was fantastic use of voice on his part from the whole cast really i think that was something that really stood out was the score and how the actors used their voices i loved it you had audrey bryson who played Dea, the blind girl now audrey was in Amelie in the West End and I remember seeing her in that first she's got a very captivating presence and I think those two together was like oh they had a very electric chemistry on stage and I think it was very well cast in that sense because you had two incredible voices that blended together so effortlessly i was so impressed by that then you had julian bleach who played the clown barco pedro is the clown's name and julian again incredible stage presence but he is effortlessly funny for us as the audience member we it, he's the first person you really see and he owns the stage in such a way and makes you laugh in such a way that 
even though he isn't the main protagonist, you walk his journey with him. The use of his his body, his face, his energy was really fantastic. There's just no other, no other way of putting it. I think for me, what really shone about him as an, as an actor was that his experience came through in his performance. I think for a young actor like myself, watching him was like a masterclass, you know, and that was really lovely to see. Um, yeah. I'd also like to uh, just put in a special little mention for Ewan Black, one of the cast members who multi-rolled throughout, but I thought his voice really stood out to me. Uh, he, yeah, he had a really good energy. When you're in the ensemble of a cast and you're multi-rolling, it's really important to understand each character you're playing as equally as the other you know you have to give 110 percent to each one and i certainly think he did that that you know none of them were lacking i yeah i was just really taken aback by his voice uh it was very very pure Ooh. the writer of the show was carl gross and you had tom morris as the director fantastic job literally can't say anything bad about the show about the direction and um, what i loved was the production i watched uh, last night was filmed at bristol old vic when i saw it uh, live it was at uh, trafalgar studios in london and um, it was very interesting actually because both stages are very very small uh, very intimate theatres and i like that but not once were you drawn to the size of the theatre and that to me shows really good direction and use of the space so yeah again like a masterclass amazing then you had the original score written by Mark Taylor and Tim Phillips oh my god the music was incredible like I said before it was ethereal it was haunting it was beautiful i feel like the whole cast had a chance to really showcase their voice even if they weren't playing one of the lead roles and that's amazing you know a great showcase for them but it just meant that you had this really full sound from not a very large cast and I really appreciated that. I think even watching it on on um, Bristol Old Vic at home, it still captured that essence of this is a really full sound from only like seven or eight people. It's it just brilliant. Go and listen to it. It's available on YouTube or you can buy it. Um, via the Bristol Old Vic's website. The link is just below. So. Go, go buy it. What are you doing? Don't wait, go. <laughs> I know I mentioned uh, the puppetry in the show before, but I'm going to mention it again because I'm just... The overall design and direction of the puppetry movement throughout the show was just exquisite. I'm, I, I was blown away by how good it was. The puppets were made by Gear and Gimbal uh, and they did all the puppetry for Warhorse as well so that kind of gives you an idea of um, how good they are <laughs> um, but yeah the, I'm trying to think of something bad about this show and I can't which is amazing because I feel like every other review I've done there's always been something that I'm like mm. If you do nothing else with your week, please, please, please go and watch The Grinning Man. I also want to take a second to just mention that um, you can donate to Bristol Old Vic and that just means that you're supporting the artists that have worked on this production, you're supporting the theatre that have produced it and it means that they can continue to create work like that. 
um, so please if you can take a second to um, donate and if not maybe buy the soundtrack or some merchandise you know if you really enjoy it I know I certainly will be that's what we need to be doing at the minute we need to be supporting theatre as much as possible but yeah I adore the show absolutely up there in, in my like probably in my top three I would say Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy The Grinning Man. Please let me know what you think if you do watch it. And I'll see you again very, very soon, guys. Like and subscribe.